Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. It is a simple thing. <laughs> Acts 16, verse 29 to 31 says, The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. I was once talking to a lady who did not believe in Jesus the way I do, and in our conversation she said that she could not buy into the process by which people became followers of Jesus. It is too easy, she said. She was of another faith community in which rituals and traditions and observing many rules all play an integral part in determining whether you are one of them or not. Paul and Silas were in jail overnight for a crime that did not warrant the punishment. These two followers of Jesus were being harassed by a young girl who was possessed by an evil spirit that could predict the future. Some men used her to make money. What she was doing on, these, on this occasion was mockingly announced that Paul and Silas were showing people how they could be saved. Paul knew that it was the evil spirit inside of her mocking them, and one day he had just about had enough of this menace. He turned around and he said to the evil spirit that was inside the girl, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the evil spirit left, permanently. Well, her management team realized that the flow of income from this girl's weird skills had just dried up and so they made a citizen's arrest. They took Paul and Silas to court the same day and announced the charge. These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. Ooh. That charge was openly confirmed by the crowd who supported the handlers of this girl. The judges ordered that Paul and Silas be severely beaten with rods and afterwards were thrown into jail and the jailer ordered to guard them carefully. Well, later that night, while these two prisoners were singing, there was an earthquake that opened the prison doors. The jailer was sure that all the prisoners had escaped and was about to kill himself when Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself! We are all here. The jailer could not believe was he, what he was hearing. He got lights to confirm that it was true and then he threw himself on the ground before Paul and Silas and asked this famous question, What must I do to be saved? You see, the jailer realized that all the time Paul and Silas were trying to tell people in that city that they needed to get saved. On this occasion, the jailer had seen how people who are saved deal with crises. They were beaten the day before and thrown into jail. Here, instead of cursing the system and complaining about their injuries from the flogging, they were singing praise songs. Who sing praise songs while they are in jail unfairly? Who sing praise songs after being whipped and beaten as they were? And as if that were not enough, the earthquake caused the prison doors to be opened. These guys had the perfect opportunity to escape, but instead, they remained. What kind of people are these? He knew the answer. They were saved. If this is what saved looks like, I want to be saved too. I cannot believe that these guys who are my prisoners who were severely flogged in public are now sitting down in this jail and having got a perfect opportunity to escape, they are still here in jail. And these men saw that I was about to kill myself with my own sword because they knew that if anybody had escaped, I would be in big trouble. And they cared so much that they stopped me from my madness. They stopped me from killing myself. What kind of guys are you? Oh, I know. You are saved. Well, what must I do to be saved? I want to be like you and I can't wait any longer. Well, listen to Paul's answer. Believe. Mm -hmm. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. That's it. There has to be more than a person should do in order to be saved. Well... Let us see. 
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The passage says it. Believe. How about this? Romans 10 verse 9 to 10 say, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is, your, it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Believe and say it. This last quotation from Romans says that when you believe in your heart, you are justified. What does it really mean to believe? It happens at the heart level, my friend. Jesus was sent to earth to show humans the way back to God. The whole human race, every single one of us, was not in a relationship with God. We were sinners from before we were born. The message to the world is that every person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God and that he was crucified died instead of us and he was buried, but three days later he came out of the grave alive and promised that he can never die again. If you believe that, you are saved. Why? Because he is God, and God does not and cannot die. So if you believe that Jesus Christ died for you and came back from the dead alive, you are saved. Oh, and one other thing. Say it out loud. Profess your faith in Jesus. Then you are saved. Incidentally, the jailer did that. He and his family and staff, and that night they were all saved. It is as easy as that, my friend. It is that simple. Do you want to be saved? Believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and say it because you really mean it.